Good morning, my beloved Christ Point family. We want to welcome you all back once again this Sunday, 22nd of May, 2022, to our 10 a.m. service. For those of you who are tuning in for the very first time, good morning and welcome to Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. My name is Carlos Corrado. Thank you and bless you for allowing us to come to the sanctuary of your homes once again to share God's word with you. We at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, are here to share the good news of salvation to everyone beginning here at home in the beautiful city of Melbourne, Australia, all the way to the ends of the world. The church is not a building, but a group of people who believe in Jesus as their Lord and Savior and have a true relationship with the Father in heaven and are a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit. We at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, want to be able to help people connect to their destiny. And their destiny is our Savior, Jesus Christ. We then want our equipment to go out into the world and connect others to their destiny also by sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. The Word of God tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 1. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. It is for me a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's Word with you all again. As always, we want to remind you to keep up to date with us via the Crosspoint Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices as well as your Android ones. Like and follow us on Facebook as well as to subscribe to our YouTube channels and check out our website. Now, please remember to share us with your family and friends as we continue to share the gospel to the ends of the earth. I'm excited and blessed to be leading Christ Point Melbourne and to be a part of its amazing growth and journey. We at Christ Point Church Melbourne are excited that we are soon to begin, God willing, face-to-face -face services in the Caroline Springs, Burnside Heights area. And we would love for you to join us for both our Spanish and English services every Sunday afternoon. We shall give you more information in regards to the specific location and times of worship in the coming weeks. So please watch this space and stay tuned to our social media for further developments and updates. Now we ask that you pray for and with us as we continue on this mission. This 2022, the focus of your church is growth. And I'm not talking about a growth in size, no numbers, but rather spiritual growth within every single one of us. Associate Pastor Peter Antoni and I have been covering messages which have looked at several aspects of the life of Jesus, which have allowed and continue to help us to grow spiritually this year. Now, we at Christ Point Church Melbourne want to be able to share with you the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, and the presence of the Christ who lived, who died, and who victoriously rose from the dead. Now, from today, 22nd of May, we shall start our new four-week series entitled God in Our Home this 2022. Now, we will be looking at what our family lives should be like when God is in the center. Now, this morning, we shall look at a message entitled, Hello, Anybody Home? But we'll come to that a little later this morning. Now, over the next few months, we will be going through the following series, which will take us all the way to the end of the year. In the month of July, we shall be diving into a series entitled, Faith 2022. We'll cover messages on how to grow our faith. Then in August and September, we shall develop a new series entitled Sin, where we shall be diving into a deeper look at what sin is all about. We shall then enter the month of October, where our series for the month or the focus will be the kingdom of God with our series, Thy Kingdom Come. We shall look at what Jesus meant every time he talked about the kingdom of heaven. Now, God willing, in November, we shall be diving into a series entitled I Am, where we will look at who God is. Then we'll enter December where we as Christ Point Church Melbourne want to give you the gift of love. We want to give you the gift of Jesus. And our series entitled Christmas at Christ Point is meant to do just this. Now many more surprises are in store for you all this coming Christmas. But before we get there, we shall continue with our Bible studies every second Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. I encourage you to join Associate Pastor Peter and Tony as he takes us through an in-depth study of the Holy Scriptures by our second channel, Christ Point Midweek, which you can find via our app. You can also join us every second Wednesday night to our Connect services at 7.30 p.m., where we shall be covering practical and biblical principles to live a more holy life during these trying and unprecedented times. Now, our Wednesday night Connect services will be available via Facebook and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. Remember also to join us every Thursday at 7.30 p.m. to watch our segment, The Sermon of the Week. Then on Fridays at 7.30, we will have El Sermón de la Semana, or the Sermon of the Week in Spanish, only via Facebook and the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app. We ask that you keep praying with and for us as we continue on our mission of pointing people to Christ. I want to ask you to close your eyes, bow your heads as we pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord of Heaven, 
We thank you for the blessing of life and health that you give us. Thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to be in your presence again today, even if it is through the use of modern technology, through YouTube, through Facebook, and the official Christ Point Melbourne app. We come together this morning in the unity of our faith in you. We ask, Lord, that you soften our hearts so that your word can penetrate to the deepest part of it. We ask, Father, that you clear our ears so that we may be able to hear your voice clearly. May you steal our minds as to think and focus only on you. May we always grow in maturity and strength in your word. May we understand that you have called every single one of us to serve you and you alone. Bless us beyond measure and fill us with your peace. Give us a desire in our hearts to serve you more and more with all of our hearts, with all of our minds, and also our hands. Heavenly Father, we want to surrender our all to you this morning. Father, may we have the humility to follow you above all else and the passion to live our lives for you alone. May we seek to know you more and more and dismiss whatever this world is offering us. May we embrace your love. May we embrace your grace and your forgiveness. May we reject darkness and embrace your light. May we be brave enough to step up to your calling of us. Heavenly Father, we recognize that we make mistakes when we try to plan our lives without you. We can be our best only when we are in the center of your perfect will. Now this morning, Father, we come to you with our problems and ask for your guidance. We come with our weaknesses and ask for your strength. We come with our needs and ask for your fullness. We pray and think of those who are with ill health, those who are struggling with cancer and kidney failure, liver failure, those who are struggling with diabetes, those who are sleep deprived due to their lack of health, those who are suffering from intestinal issues, COVID-19 and its variants, those who are suffering from their eyesight and other complex medical issues. We pray for those who mourn the loss of a loved one. Father, we ask that you grant them comfort and peace in their hearts. We pray for our friends who are currently traveling overseas for various reasons. We pray for our friends and missionaries in the Balkans. Lord, we pray that you bless them and protect them and their children. Father, you know every single one of them by name. Bless them according to your perfect will. Give them the peace to know that you are in full control and that no matter the situation, you will be honored and glorified. As to any situation, Jesus is the answer. We pray that you remain with us this morning as we hear from your Holy Scriptures. I ask, Father, that you put words into my mouth this morning that may become a blessing to those who hear them. May it be the Holy Spirit using me to convey the message that you, Father, have for everyone listening. May those who have ears hear your message this morning. We pray this and a whole lot more in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stay with us as we continue with praise and worship. His 
His power is greater, for He has created everything. Hey, yeah, yeah. mighty is our God, mighty is our King, mighty is our Lord, yeah, ruler of everything. Yeah. 
to remember Remember to download the Crestbank Church Melbourne app, free from the App Store and Google Play. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on Facebook. And visit our website. Christ Point Church Melbourne, the place to belong. Christ Point Kids TV Pointing Kids to Christ Welcome to another episode of A Word of Advice by Just a Simple Preacher. To mourn for your spiritual sins is a natural outflow of poverty of spirit. Many know they are wrong, yet pretend they are right. As a result, they never taste the exquisite sorrow of repentance. Of all paths to joy, this one must be the strangest. True blessedness, Jesus says, begins with deep sadness. The book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 4, reminds us, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. So remember, Jesus says that the true blessedness begins with deep sadness. So, repent. Come to Jesus today. This was a word of advice by just a simple preacher. Sometimes a reboot is what we need to get things back on track.
sometimes a reboot is what we need to get things back on track. I can't smile anymore. It's not real anyway. I can't remember the last time my family made me smile. It's my husband's fault. He does nothing. We're supposed to be partners. Then why is it that I'm doing everything? And he does zero parenting. He's like a zombie. That is, until he explodes at me and the kids. I don't hate him. He's just not the man I fell in love with. I wish Mom and Dad would stop fighting. I'm so sick of this stupid, dysfunctional family. Mom's constantly yelling at everyone, especially me. It's like she's trying to find reasons to ground me. She says I'm acting out to get attention. Hello? What am I supposed to do? It's like nobody even knows I exist. My brother just locks himself in his room all day. My dad is either watching TV or he's on his laptop. Not only really pays attention to me when she's screaming at me. Ugh, I hate this. We used to do fun stuff together, but I guess it's never gonna happen again. I'm totally gonna run away. That would be so amazing. You have no idea. I'm tired of this family. I'm sick of my annoying sister. She's such a brat. She wants all the attention. I'm tired of my mom treating me like I'm a five-year-old. I'm 16. Huh? How about you ask me what I want for once? And then there's my dad. If he doesn't care about me, then I don't care about him. You know, my friends actually have dads that hang out with them and talk to them. Well, I don't. Whatever. As soon as I'm 18, I'm out of here. My family's falling apart. Who am I kidding? My life is falling apart. My wife hates me. My kids hate me. I thought things would be different. I thought I'd be able to move up in life, have a meaningful job, spend quality time with Susan and the kids. Instead, I'm stuck doing the same thing I was 10 years ago, only now I have twice as much debt. I dread going to work. I dread coming home. All I wanna do is switch off. Of course, that's when she starts in with the nagging. It's like she knows how to push every single button I have, and when I can't take it anymore, I just lose it. I love my wife. I love my family, but... I just don't have the energy to keep this up. I hate to think about where we're headed. Or maybe it's inevitable. I just, I just wish, wish things were different. different. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for our Sunday service here at Christ Point Church, Melbourne, the place to belong. As always, it is for me a blessing and a privilege to be able to share God's Word with you. Now remember to keep up to date with us via the Christ Point Melbourne app, free for your Apple and Android devices. Remember also to follow us on Facebook, as well as to subscribe to our YouTube channels and check out our website. Please remember to share us with your family and friends as we continue to share the Gospel to the ends of the earth. 
We at Christ One Church Melbourne are soon to begin, God willing, face-to-face -face services in the Caroline Springs Burnside Heights area. And we would love for you to join us for both our Spanish and English services. This 2022, the focus of our church has been growth, not in size or numbers, but rather spiritual growth. Over the last few months, we have spoken about the growth of Jesus, his baptism, how he overcame temptation, and other aspects of his life. And over the next few months, we shall continue covering messages that will oversee different topics which will allow us to grow spiritually. Through our theme on growth for the year, we want to be able to share with you the person of Jesus, the power of Jesus, the purpose of Jesus, and the presence of the Christ who lived, who died, and who victoriously rose from the dead. Today, we start our new series entitled, God in Our Home. And our first message is also entitled, Hello, Anybody Home? So let us begin by reading from the first of Peter, chapter 3, verse 1 to 12. And the Word of God tells us this. Wives, in the same way, submit yourselves to your own husbands, so that if any of them do not believe the word, they may be won over without words by the behavior of their wives, when they see the purity and reverence of your lives. Your beauty should not come from outward adornment, such as elaborate hairstyles and the wearing of gold jewelry or fine clothes. Rather, it should be that of your inner self, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is of great worth in God's sight. For this is the way the holy women of the past, who put their hope in God, used to adorn themselves. They submitted themselves to their own husbands, like Sarah, who obeyed Abraham and called him her Lord. You are her daughters if you do what is right and do not give way to fear. Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. Finally, all of you, be like-minded, be sympathetic, love one another, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing because to this you were called, so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep their tongue from evil and their lips from deceitful speech. They must turn from evil and do good. They must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Let us now put this passage into context and dissect it. In a Christian marriage, both partners should have a spirit of submission and commitment to each other and to God. Peter's advice to Christian wives emphasizes a new commitment to authority. Instead of rebelling against or criticizing an unbelieving husband, godly wives can win their husbands to Christ by a far better method, their conduct. This method parallels God's call to Christian slaves and Christian citizens within an ungodly environment. To win an unbelieving husband without a word means that a wife should live in such a way that the words she speaks cannot be called into question or disrepute. Through the power of her character, a woman can melt her husband's heart and compel him to want to know more about her faith. And the power of a woman's commitment can literally change her husband's life. In Peter's time, some wives who were not converse to Christianity thought that they were free not to submit because their husbands were insensitive to spiritual matters. Peter instead urges them to have a chaste and virtuous conduct in reverence for God. In other words, a fear of God that will ensure their husbands of their integrity and commitment. Beauty in the eyes of God is not the beauty that society sees, which is merely outward and superficial. God considers a gentle and quiet spirit the cultivation of a woman's inner character to be her finest adornment. In other words, or this means that biblical beauty goes far beyond skin deep. Now, Peter continues his advice to wives about being submissive by referring to Sarah as an example, which we read in the Old Testament. When the Bible teaches marital submission, it does not suggest that the wife is somehow less than her husband. No. Or that she can never make decisions. No, none of that. Or that she is her husband's servant. No, especially that. 
I hear some of the sisters, especially my wife, saying amen at the back there. However, God has established that the husband should be the spiritual leader in their home and that both husband and wife should submit to Christ. The holy women who trusted in God are those Old Testament wives who modeled godly submission. Women are not under the authority of just any man. Wives are to submit to the Lord first, to God first, and then to their husbands. Because husbands and wives are heirs together to the grace of life, they have equal worth before God, not one more than the other. Now, this idea was very revolutionary when Peter wrote this. For back then, wives were often regarded as objects to be owned, not partners to be loved or cared for. The Christian husband has a responsibility to regard his wife's well-being thoughtfully, to know her needs, and to respond to them sympathetically. A wife is the weaker vessel because, in general, women are physically not as strong as men. Now, this demands that a husband should be gentle. We read in the Bible that the surest way to receive a blessing is to be a blessing to others, in particular to your wives and to your husbands. Now, this is the opposite of returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling. God does not want His people just to think of the right thoughts. He wants them to live the right way as they interact with other people, in particularly their spouse. Now, to do good is not a subjective term. The Greek word conveys an act of higher moral standards and benefits, doing the right thing at the right time. Now, departing from evil by itself is not good enough. Let me share something personal with you. Sometimes in my house, there is so much silence that you think that there's nobody home. My eldest, Allison, would spend her time in her bedroom studying for uni or streaming from multiple platforms. You can find Jason, my youngest, watching the Travel Channel's Mountain Monsters or playing games on his Nintendo Switch. My wife, Mirna, would be watching her favorite TV shows on Netflix or cooking something yummy for us to eat. If you look hard enough, you'll find me either reading, writing, or editing a message like this one in the study or in the garage. If you walked into our house any given day, your question would be most likely, Hello, anybody home? Having said this, I'd like for us to go to the book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verses 1 to 2. We're going to home in these two verses this morning as our starting point for today's message. A gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gushes folly. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessing on us through the home and our families. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now, we live in a fantastic age of instant worldwide communication. Many people around the world are currently watching Christ Point as we speak. We can converse with and instantly send communications to people around the globe. We can even watch and listen by means of television or the internet as people converse with people living in the space station in outer space. Now, we can do this because of the excellent communication facilities that modern technology has made available to us. All of us are involved in the communication business in one way or another. I am a communicator, you are a communicator, we are communicators. People in general are communicators. And this is part of our uniqueness as the crown of God's creation made in the image of the Creator. The Bible teaches us that God is also a communicator. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, He has spoken to us by His Son, whom He appointed heir of all things, and through whom also He made the universe. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1-2 to two. The Bible is the record of God's self-revelation and His efforts to communicate His goodwill to humans. God continues to seek to communicate with people through the passages of the Bible and through experiences that His children have through faith and obedience. The experience that we call prayer is actually an experience of communication with the Father God. Now, believers not only approach the throne of grace in prayer to present confessions, praise, and petitions, but if prayer is to be meaningful, we must also listen. God is a communicator, and humans have a built-in receiving set, which is called the heart. Our Lord, following His victorious resurrection from the dead, charged His disciples to become communicators. The Great Commission is concerned with communication. 
there is no way by which we can think of continued existence except in terms of both giving and receiving communication from others. In no area of life is good communication more important than within the family circle. I want to speak about three main points this morning in regards to communication in the family. The first point is that a marriage is a result of a communication process. It is often said that people get married because they fall in love with each other. The experience of falling in love is the end result of a process of communication. By the process of courtship, they sell each other on the idea that their greatest future happiness is to be found in a union of their two lives in marriage. The communication that leads to marriage may take many different forms. The man and the woman may dialogue often on a variety of subjects. They may communicate by email and text or chat on the phone. They may even communicate each other by exchanging gifts. Now, communication may take the form of a smile or a frown. Holding hands is a form of communication, as is a kiss. Because the man communicates something that is very desirable to the woman, and because the woman communicates something that is very desirable to the man, they decide to enter marriage that they might live in communication with each other on a continuing and permanent basis. Marriage is the result of love, but it is also the result of a process of favorable communication between a man and a woman. Now, the second point that I want to highlight is the peril of poor communication in the home. Many dangers imperil the lines of communication in the world. A power failure may occur or an accident may interrupt the lines of communication. Likewise, there are many hindrances to good communication within the home. A successful marriage requires effective and benevolent communication between a husband and wife and between parents and children. Communication is a primary problem in all types of family difficulties. First, some marriages fail because the couple ceases to communicate with each other. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 tells us, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruits. Let me ask you the following. Are we using types of communication in our homes that will destroy the desire of others to be in communication with us? Now, some marriages fail because of destructive and inappropriate types of communication. We need to examine the types of communication that we're using in our home, with our wives, with our kids. Now, beware of cutting criticism that creates hostility. The courtship process consisted of a man and a woman bestowing one's compliment after another on each other. If marriage is to continue to be happy and satisfying, the expressions of compliments and approvals must continue. If criticism is over-offered, it should be combined with compliments. An appropriate time and mood should be selected for the expression of any criticism. We need to be careful and always be on the lookout for the following things. Emotional outbursts. Regretfully, much of the destructive communication in the home takes place on the level of an emotional outburst, especially when external factors contribute. Factors such as work, school, stress, fatigue, etc. We also need to look out for dated emotions. An unpleasant experience in our early life can so injure us as to cause and to react in an unfavorable manner at a time when similar circumstances remind us of the pain that we experienced at that time. We also need to be aware of misplaced emotions in which we express anger towards a person when in reality we are upset about something else. We also need to look out for a dogmatic attitude. A dogmatic attitude that does not consider the opinions of others. One man said with sarcasm, My wife has never made a mistake in our 15 years of marriage. She was a dogmatic soul who could never admit being wrong. Now, we have to be careful by saying that. Now, I'm not sure if that guy's still alive, whoever said it. Another important thing is to beware of insulting each other. An insult will always provoke an angry retaliation. Husbands and wives who often insult each other will impact negatively in each other, moreover in those around them. Parents who are guilty of insulting their children should not wonder why their children are angry with them or everybody else. We also need to examine the tone of our communication. You may communicate more by the manner in which you speak rather than with the words that you use. The book of Proverbs tells us this, a gentle answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. Proverbs 15 verse 1. 
like apples of gold in settings of silver is a ruling rightly giving. Proverbs 25 verse 11. This morning I also want to highlight another point, and that is building good communication lines within the home. When a husband and wife have broken their lines of communication between themselves, a third party may be needed to help reconstruct these lines. A couple went to their pastor with a request, Pastor, we need your help. We don't want to get divorced, but somehow our marriage has ceased to be the meaningful and beautiful thing it once was. Can you help us? The pastor congratulated the couple on their wisdom and listened to their problems. Then he suggested some guidelines for rebuilding the lines of communication that had been so meaningful to them in the past. Now, his suggestions may prove helpful to you and I this morning also. Now, number one, ask the Lord for help. Establish a time each day in which together, even if you pray silently, you lift your home with its problems and potential up before God's throne of grace. Number two, accept the fact of human frailty and imperfection. Do not expect perfection from family members and be certain to recognize your own imperfections and incompleteness. Number three, develop a concern for the feelings of others. Both husband and wife have individual personal feelings that are of supreme importance to them. Children also have emotional needs. We must be concerned about the feelings of others in our home. Number four, Apologize for improper and hurtful words and actions. Ask the Lord to help you say, I am sorry, to the members of your own household when you mistreat them. Now, this takes faith and courage and also grace. Number five, practice the fine art of forgiveness. You must forgive others if you want God to forgive you. Renounce the right to retaliate and instead restore a warm feeling. Number six, Recognize the importance of listening to others. Listening takes time and concentration. Others need to know that you are listening. Number seven, determine to become a giver and recognize the good in others. But you may be asking, Pastor C, how can we do this? Well, first, give praise to others in the household. Second, express gratitude to others in the home. Third, express confidence in others in the home. Fourth, create a sense of high esteem in others. And one final thought that I want you to remember, do not cut others down. Build them up and encourage them. Good communication is a dialogue and not a monologue. Listen to those in your home as well as speaking to them. God is seeking to communicate with you His love, His forgiveness, His hope, His help, and the happiness that you can have that can be yours. This morning, you are listening and watching this not by coincidence. Today is an opportunity to decide to listen to the Lord. You need to listen to His words and believe His promises. You need to confess your need for Him and invite Him into your heart and into your home. I encourage you this morning to let God come into your household, to come into your home. And we do this by accepting Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So come to Jesus today. If you have not let Jesus Christ come into your life to be your shepherd, to be your savior, to be your Lord, to be your king, to be your friend, today is the perfect day to do so. Let him become the Lord of your life today. The Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 the following, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God. If you are not yet one of his disciples, open the door of your heart and let him begin his good work in you today. Let him have command over your life. Now, would you like to fully surrender your all to Him today? God has given us a new day, a new opportunity, a new chance, if you will, this morning to be obedient and not rebellious. God wants to continue building His church, and He wants you to be a part of it. Yeah, you. Now, going to heaven has nothing to do with how good you are or what religion you belong to or even what church you attend. The Bible tells us clearly how we may know 100% for sure that we will go straight to heaven when we die. There are four simple truths that we must understand. The first of those is the fact that we all have sinned. The book of Romans tells us this, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3 verse 23. God's word tells us that we're all sinners by nature and also by choice. We all have broken God's holy laws and we stand guilty and condemned before Him. No one is perfect. The second is that there is punishment for our sins. 
The book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23 reminds us, For the wages of sin is death. Because God is holy, He must punish sin. And the punishment that God requires for sin is death. There are two deaths mentioned in the Bible, the physical death and spiritual death. We must be punished for our sins by being separated from God forever in the lake of fire. And no good works or religion can save us. Every unsaved sinner is headed for hellfire. But you know what? There is hope for you and I. This brings me to the third truth that Jesus Christ took our punishment. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8 tells us, But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we're still sinners, Christ died for us. And John 3.16 tells us of the love of God for us. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Lord Jesus Christ, God's only Son, came to earth to save us from our sins. He died on the cross for our sins and rose again three days later. He took our punishment upon Himself so that we might go to heaven. The fourth and final truth is the fact that we can be saved right now. Yes, you and I. Salvation is in the person of Jesus Christ. No church, no religion, no good works, no baptism, no communion, nor confession can save us. Jesus Christ alone is our Savior. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 13 states, For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to finish this morning by asking you the following. Have you accepted Jesus into your heart? Have you accepted Him as your Lord and Savior? Today is a great day to allow Jesus Christ into your heart. He came to die on a wooden cross for my sins, for your sins, and those of the world. You can be saved right now if you will admit your sin and guilt and repent. Turn from your sin and whatever you're currently trusting and turn to Jesus. Believe that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on the cross for your sins and rose from the grave on the third day. Call and ask Jesus to forgive you and save you right now. So don't go home this morning without the best gift that you will ever get, the gift of salvation in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ through His death and resurrection. So look, look on to Him, my friend. Look on to God Almighty. Look on to Jesus and you will be saved. If you want to take home this gift of salvation today, open your heart to Jesus and repeat with me this prayer. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on a cross for me and that you rose again on the third day, defeating death, defeating the grave once and for all. I now turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life, and I now trust you as Savior, Lord and King, and I will follow you no matter what. Jesus, thank you for saving me today. In your name I pray this. Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us. We'd love to help you and equip you in your new journey with God. I encourage you to make contact with us via the official Christ Point Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices as well as your Android ones. You can also make contact with us via Facebook, YouTube, and our website. I'm Carlos Corrado, Senior Pastor and Founder of Christ Point Church Melbourne. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. See you again later tonight at 6.30 p.m. as we join Pastor Peter and Tony. Then next week at 9 a.m. to our Spanish service and then our 10 a.m. and 6.30 regular services in English as we continue with our theme on growth. Now remember also to join us through the week to our various activities and messages through social media and our app. Let us pray this morning. Dear Heavenly Father and Lord Jesus, Thank you once again for allowing us to hear your holy word. Thank you that you make all things new for us and the opportunities that you give us to get to know you more and more through your holy word. Thank you for reminding us how much we need you and how much we need to rely on your presence to fill us every single day, 24-7. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your only begotten Son, Jesus, to die for our sins. We thank you, Father, for you forgive us of our sins and transgressions and want to release us from our guilt. We thank you, Father, because you have given us another opportunity to come to your Son, Jesus. Give us the courage to turn away from sin and turn to embrace Jesus today. We thank you for reminding us that there is no other name on earth or heaven that surpasses your glorious name. Thank you, Father, for your goodness and generosity in giving us all that we need and beyond. 
Thank you, Father, for your reminders that no matter the situation, Jesus is the answer. We pray for everyone who is watching and listening to us. Bless them abundantly. Help us to praise you, Father. Help us to trust you. Help us to serve you. Help us to share your love and mercy with others. Help us, Father, to glorify you. And this week, may we live for you, O God. Use us to make your word be fully known throughout the world, beginning with our family, our friends, and the people that we encounter. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families. We know that we're never alone, for you are constantly at work on behalf of your children, shielding, protecting, strengthening, exposing deeds of darkness, bringing to light what needs to be known, covering from us the cruel attacks we face, even when we're unaware. We ask that you give us wisdom and discernment to recognize the schemes of the enemy and to stand strong against his work. We ask that you remind us to pray constantly for our families. We ask that you help us to stay alert in a dark world. We ask that you help us to be the salt and light on this broken world, that we would be loving and gracious yet unyielding to sin. We ask that you help us to remember to put on your armor daily. For you give us all that we need to stand firm in our faith in you. We thank you that you are far greater than anything we face here in this life. And we have overcome because you have set us free. We thank you for your truth that no weapon formed against me will prosper. Lord, we ask for your peace. We ask for your protection. We trust you for your constant work on our behalf. We ask you bring justice to our families when they have been hurt by lies, betrayals, and deceptions. We ask that you would bring light, knowing that you expose the deeds of darkness and those who have sought to destroy us. We as a family stand together in your great and powerful name, believing you are with us. We thank you, Father. Now may the Father's hand keep you from stumbling. The footprints of Jesus give you the strength and the confidence to follow, and the fire of the Holy Spirit keep you warm and safe in your walk with God today, tomorrow, and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
The preacher has finished his message. It is now the time for you to make a decision to come to the Father through Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you want to accept the Lord Jesus into your heart today, repeat this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and need your forgiveness. I know you died on the cross for me and that you rose again on the third day, defeating death, defeating the grave once and for all. I now turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me. I invite you into my heart and life, and I now trust you as Savior, Lord and King, and I will follow you no matter what. Lord Jesus, thank you for saving me today. In your name I pray this. Amen. If you made this prayer with me, let me welcome you to the family of God. If you want to know more about Jesus, please make contact with us. We want to help you and equip you in your new journey with God. Also to help you go out into the world and continue to share the good news of Jesus Christ with others who do not know Him yet. I encourage you to contact us via the official Christ Point Church Melbourne app, free for your Apple devices and for your Android ones. You can also make contact with us via Facebook, YouTube and or our website. Thank you for joining us today. May God bless you. See you next week.